beliefs Sometimes I look into my soul real deep In the mirror and just ask myself Damn, what would I be? Yeah, she made Maserati money And it says Maserati money beyond belief what would I be? Maserati Money from the Bronx, New York. And this is Maserati Money Beyond Belief documentary. My story started on May 22nd, 1989. I was born in Brooklyn, New York. I was born with a birth defect called Spina Bifida. It's actually full form to Spina Bifida. You know, my form, you know, find me to a wheelchair rest of my life and um actually you know I was I was given X amount of years to even survive living on my life. Spina bifida or its most severe form, myelomeningocele, is the most common central nervous system or neurologic birth defect in the world. Myelomeningocele is a uh, defect in the spine. It's failure of the uh, spinal cord to close. The spinal cord, or the neural tube, as the embryologists say, uh, forms very early in gestation, certainly before eight weeks gestation. And spina bifida is thought to be a failure of the formation and closure of that neural tube, so that the spinal cord elements are exposed to the intrauterine environment. It's a progressive process. It's a progressive injury, so that by the end of pregnancy, there's been direct traumatic injury to the spinal cord and there's been injury from the amniotic fluid itself. Because of changes in pressure and fluid flow, babies are also at risk for developing hydrocephalus. Which is a fluid buildup on the brain and which uh, damages the developing brain. Virtually every child with myelomeningocele or spina bifida has an Arnold Chiari malformation on x-ray. And what it is, is that the back part of the brain, called the cerebellum, that has a lot to do with control of motor movements, is wedged down into your neck. The cerebral spinal fluid that cushions the brain and cushions the spinal cord leaks out through the back through the open spina bifida defect. That leads to the back part of the brain getting sumped down into the upper part of the spinal canal. That in turn can block the circulation of cerebral spinal fluid in the brain because the fluid is produced in the brain and then there's no way for it to circulate beyond that blockage point. So if there's a blockage in the flow of that fluid, then the water builds up inside the ventricle. So you've probably heard the term water on the brain. The water isn't on the brain, it's inside the brain. If you don't treat that, then you end up with a massively enlarged head, uh, or you die, or you end up with severe mental retardation. When I was three days old, I had got brain surgery to get what's called the shunt. Surgically replaced the side of my brain to drain excess water from my brain, you know what I'm saying, to prevent any type of mental issues, you know what I'm saying? So, in order to minimize that ongoing damage of pressure from the fluid, the pediatric neurosurgeon places a shunt tube. It's a simple device. This is a shunt. It's made out of silicone. This end goes through a hole in the back of the head into that water cavity and tunnels down under the skin and goes into the abdomen, which is able to absorb the fluid. It's not a cure. It treats the symptom. It doesn't treat the disease. Once you have a shunt, there are multiple complications that can arise from it. The shunt can become infected, which is a serious complication because then the brain and the layers in the brain can become infected with meningitis and cephalitis. And with each bout of infection, that can affect the brain function. And then, of course, there are mechanical problems. They clog, they break, they get to be too short, they migrate. So it's not unusual for a child with spina bifida who has a shunt to require that shunt 
and not only for life, but to have that shunt changed at least five or six times during the course of their life. And this shit ain't never coming out of my head, man. This shit is in my brain for life. I grew, but this ain't grow. It still stay the same. Look, you can even see this shit, man. It's real. This ain't no vein. This is a tool. This ain't no vein, bro. This ain't no vein. This is a tool. So all these rappers, like, they had a lot of war stories, man. Like, I can talk about the street stuff. I done did the street stuff or whatever. I know people that did the street stuff, all the war stories. But did you see death when you was born? Did you see death when you was born? I seen death when I was born. You can't tell me about a war story. Don't tell Mozzie about a war story. Because I'm living a war story every day. Every day I'm living. You know what I'm saying? I was raised by my grandmother. You know what I'm saying? Mr. Mama Blockman, love that lady to death. This lady been there from day one. Regardless to what, right, wrong, and indifferent, she was there. So, this is, it's real, man. It's real. Even when my uncle passed, and both of my other two uncles was locked up, she was like the, the mother and the father and the uncle and the brother and sister. This was what I had. So you know, that's, that's what it is. Without her, I don't know where I'd be right now, man. She was looking ugly for the boy, man. Fresh. So yeah, I remember, I was saying like 1993, 1994. You know what I'm saying? I started falling in love with hip hop. Because my uncle Spinny. Yeah, I got shot 19 times. You know what I'm saying? Ben is just a little beef in the street or whatever. Got shot 19 times. So I remember him getting high. You know, he get high. And he would just throw on the biggie beat. And just start freestyling about his life. Both of them biggie beat. And that just blew my mind. It's like, yo, this guy right here, like, he's, he's talking reality right now. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I got into it. Whatever. Then later on down the line, I remember I would be in like middle school, junior high school. I would, I would go to school. I battled with kids in the lunchroom for like five, ten dollars. You know what I'm saying? Kid stuff. You know, around the high school, around my high school time. You know what I mean? My, my uncle Slick was you more know, like my brother. You know what I'm saying? He's a little older than me. He had, you know, a fortune. Kids got to go away for a little minute. So, you know, he went away. That kind of had this up to me emotionally. It's like, I don't have no older brothers. He was like my older brother. So, those years, you know what I'm saying, that he was away, I was lost, man. So, I wasn't really doing nothing with the music thing, man. I was just, to be honest, man, I was thinking about giving up, man. It's just like, I'm saying, growing up where I grew up at, man, it's, it's like you don't have too many options. And then, when you were ready down and out, you know what I'm saying, when, when, when law enforcement come in and just take you out, it's like you feel like hopeless, man. Useless. Right after my 21st birthday, I wasn't on rap, but I was out here looking like a rapper. <laughs> It's crazy to say out here looking like a rapper because, you know what I'm saying, I had a little bit of money in my pocket. You know what I'm saying, I had a little jewelry. I was, I was out here looking like, like I rap. I wasn't really taking it too serious. I ran into my uncle Junebug. Junebug saved my life, man. I ran into my uncle Junebug. And he don't know me as Maserati money. He knows me as Dave Vaughn. So... Long story short, he was like, yo, what you doing, man? You still doing this rap thing? It was nice back in the days, man. What's up? You know, we got the studio. So, you know, all throughout the year, in the beginning of the year, I was just playing around with him, giving him the run around. Finally, in the summertime, 2012, I had linked up with my uncle June Ball, my cousin Prince Combs. We got the real record situation popping off. And, you know, from there, you know, they showed me the way, the way in the studio, did my thing. And here we are today. I ain't in the studio since, man. So it's like music saved my life.
real, man, because the streets is ugly, man. Beyond belief, what would I be? Look into my eyes, all you see is pain. Look into my pockets, all you see is dollar signs. Watch close, I make it rain. But take a look real deep. All the material shit really would do it mean. When your niggas fighting cases and sitting up in the cages and you... Ah, one more time. These bars and these beats, so much pain in my life. It give me so much relief. Sometimes I look into my soul real deep in the mirror and just ask myself, damn, what would I be? I just gotta stay focused at the task at hand. No through a door is gonna turn me into a better man. Picture yourself living in the same shoes as me. Young black and living with a disability. Hold up. Good job. That's good. Stay focused at the task at hand. No through a door is gonna turn me into a better man. Picture yourself living in the same shoes as me. Young black and living with a disability. Hold the pain and the strain in my life till I picked up the mic. Damn, look, what would I be? With all money, 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 Where you at? BK, where you at? QU, where you at? SI, where you at? Harlem, where you at? NY, where you at? When the DJ spin this record, drop a ball on the track. Had to do a remix for the city. For the city. Hey, so, bull spread, ride it with me. Got the strippers in the G. Yeah, yeah, what up, y'all? She made Maserati money. We live in South Bronx right now. 149 and 20. We up in Eight Boys Barbershop with my man Eric right now. One of the best barbers in the world. I'm proud of money. You already know. Follow him on Instagram. Go by Sister Hand Cuts. You know what I'm saying? Goes to my man for years, man. Yo, get this game, man. I'm gonna let Will know I pay for the whole lot. Yo. Got this one, yeah. Got this is all clean. The whole transformation. Uh huh. Got South Pacific Hand Cuts. <laughs> right now, we live. Eight Bullets Barbershop, South Bronx. You already know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Eight Bowls Barbershop on deck, South Bronx. It's that Bronx shit, you know? Facts. Facts. What up, bro? What's going on, man? Chillin', chillin', chillin'. Chillin', man. Chillin', man. Chillin', man. Got this little thing popping on. You know I'm doing this, this, going hard with this rap shit, man. Got this thing beyond belief right now, man. So you already know. Word. Tell, tell, I know tell how the you people about me, man. What's how oh, I be doing it, man? man. <laughs> okay. This my god brother. Yeah. This, this dude right here. I remember when this boy didn't even have no vocals in his throat and he was talking like a little baby this nigga started rhyming out of everywhere i don't know where the fuck this nigga came out the work where he started rhyming i watched this boy grow from a little boy to a fucking grown man this dude right here listen world i don't know if y'all know about this dude but his name is maserati money my name is Ami. you know what i'm saying and this is going to be the First dude that ever made it in the rap game. Ain't no fucking wheelchair, B. Can you buy that? Can you buy that? This dude right here, this boy done put out his own mixtape with his own money. He not looking for no handouts. This boy right here in the wheelchair goes on accessorize to go to shows. 
You got niggas that got legs like us that's not even making moves like that, my nigga. This boy right here is going to flip this whole world upside down, my nigga. I'm not saying it because it's my god brother, but I seen this boy grow, and he's still growing. This boy, I seen this boy going from being broke to living in projects to being fucked up, my nigga. He was going to give up on the game. But you know what? I kept saying, Barney, man, you got to have faith, man. Don't give up, brother. It's a dream. This boy doing shit and, 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 and got shit on God. I'm, I'm seeing stripper shit on, 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 on <laughs> shit on YouTube. This nigga got music on there. This nigga got mixtapes out. This nigga, this nigga got a good job. I'm a nigga with legs. Niggas ain't even making money like this nigga. This nigga going on Sesame Street. This nigga's all over fucking New York. This, this, this nigga right here. Yo, I love this boy so much, man. I got so much faith for him, man, and I know he's gonna be all right, man, but the world gonna see this dude. He's gonna be a prime example. Whatever you dream about doing, you can do it. No matter what your disability, no matter what's going on with you, you can overcome everything, my nigga. And I'm a prime example to this boy. I stick by this boy's side. You see what I'm saying? This nigga was on, I got, got this boy was on Apollo. My man had a, 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 a fucking station on Channel 68. He was on there. Yo, this boy right here is so much the fucking truth, it don't make no sense, my nigga. All you niggas out here, so all you haters, we love though. We love our haters anyway. We ain't worried about that. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 it just started. You know what I mean? This, this is light work. But anyway, um, yo, man, he, he came so he came so far, man. Memphis Bleak. You know what I mean? He was on, he was on, he was on shows. This boy right here, man, this nigga, man, he gonna be the first dude in the wheelchair to ever make it, man. And, and I'm glad to be living to see what's gonna happen because God is good. I know he, I know he's gonna make it happen. This boy putting in all the work for himself. He not looking away for a nigga, oh, sign me this, sign me that. This nigga going on a ride, buses, trains, cabs, whatever the fuck he got to do to get on. And he doing it. He put his own money out there. You feel me? Yeah, like I was rapping since I was 12. That's one thing about the streets, man, and about the struggle. I've been rapping since I was 12. I'm 27 now. If I'd have started this shit 10 years ago or even five years ago, like who knows? I'd probably be, I'd probably be a 50 cent right now. You don't know, yep. but you know what I'm saying? The, the struggle, man, like sometimes when you when you when you going through it, man, I just had to find myself, man. Like I didn't know, like. I was taking a lot of losses. There was times where I was taking a lot of losses, bro. People dying around me, people getting locked up. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't got no older brothers and sisters. All the dudes that I'm that I be affiliated with is older than me. And these dudes that was dropping. It was the time of my life these dudes was dropping like flies. This one getting locked up, that one getting locked up, this one dying, this one getting shot up. So it's like, here I am. I'm like, damn, what's next for me? Like, what's, 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 what's in store for me? If this is what's going on around me and this is what I know, and this is what's happening to what I know, what's in store for me? Chair, yeah, you know, like I said, I'm in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. and you know, nine times out of 10, if you see another, another guy in a wheelchair or another person in general, guy, girl, whatever, Unless they parents or they people care about them, you gonna see them looking crazy. Because, you know, statistically, they, they not able to do certain things. But at the end of the day, if you got your mind right, if your mind is right, if you mentally able to figure something out, you gonna do it. Because if you want it, you want it. And I want it. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never had a job a day in my life. You know what I mean? But. I always had a little bit of money, and I was never hurting for nothing. Cause I knew, living out here, you gotta get it, man. You gotta get it. Nah, I mean, my, my, my family is 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 my family is crazy because I never got treated special. So that was a good thing and that was a bad thing because obviously certain things I couldn't do. You know what I'm saying because I can't walk or because I can't. You know what I'm saying stand up on my own two feet but the way my family was they was like all right i'm not helping you you figure it out but it was on some shit like 
It was helping me prepare for the worst. worst right. Prepare for the worst because ain't nobody gonna help you out, man. You gotta do what you gotta do on your own. So that taught me at a young age to get out and get it however I get it. And as long as I, as long as you got it, one thing about a millionaire, like it's millionaires out here now, you don't know how they became millionaires, but they got it. Got they don't, it. It don't even matter how they got it. Word. They got it. Mm-hmm. You feel me? So that that's how I move, man. I, I, I move in, in a way where it's like every, every second my mind is active on new ways to get it because I know ain't nobody going to give it to me. But do you think that's the motivation to keep you off, like keep you from the situation that you're in? That's the motivation because if you look at if you look at most people that got disabilities, mm-hmm. their situation normally gets worse because they give up on themselves. So everything is mental. So mentally, like 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 somebody with cancer. If you know you got cancer, and and you you mentally you can't take it mentally. Your body is gonna give out on you. You just gonna you gonna give up. Mm-hmm. So me, I seen people in that that has the same form of spinal bifida that I got. They bed pans like they they vegetables. Wow. They vegetables. One because you know what I'm saying people people really don't care about them, and two because they feel like all right it's over. So let me just lay down and die. Wow. I'm not laying down and die, man. Like, I, I'm i not, I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that. Because at the end of the day, I was given 10 years to live. I'm about to be 27 years old in a few weeks, man. You know, I already, I already looked death in the eye more than once in my condition. You know what I'm saying? Being in the wheelchair, you know? So it's like I had to make that decision. Where's your life going? What you want to do with your life? So I figured I'd do this music thing. It's going to, it's going to right for me, man. So, you know, this is my surprise money. Getting it popping beyond belief, man. We throwing out all statistics, all misconceptions, and all that, man. Young black, Latino men. You know, the community is man. We do it, man. Just got to put your mind to it. Look into my eyes, oh you see his pain Look into my pockets, oh you see his dollar signs Watch close, I make it rain But take a look real deep All the material shit, really what do it mean? When your niggas fighting cases Sitting up in them cages And you got all of these haters Plotting on how to take it How much more of this fake it can I take? Pray for me, devil was tempting me Mama niggas never what they pretend to be Mama look, really I'm trying to get it Trying not <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'm a paper chaser, got the black on face, you let you